This week we're featuring Lemon Citrine, Peridot under the microscope cam, eight new jokes, crispy fries on why did I buy that, and enough joy to fill your pants up. I found out why the chicken crossed the road to chase down the Easter Bunny for hiding her eggs. Let's start the show. Notice this piece of lemon citrine has a crack in it. There's a crack right here. We'll crack over here, another one around back. And we'll be able to see those better on the next video. But for the most part, this is a beautiful piece of lemon citrine. Great color. Really enjoyed working with it. A lot of lemon citrine I have is pale, but this one is inspiring. Got a couple more pieces of lemon citrine like this so we can work a little bit more with it. See right here, if you notice along the edge, and then here, and here, and here, this is about half of a full crystal point. Nice shard. Beautiful chunk. Really enjoyed working with it. Much as I enjoy having you in the chats. Because you're fantastic. I'm talking about you. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to the show. How's it going? Hey, Colette's here. All right. We had Martial Artist 2012 stop in. That was cool. Hope they're doing well. Hope they can make it back. How to Garden's here. Happy Easter, How to Garden. I, uh got a piece of iolite I was going to feature, but I wanted something kind of pastel colored. Kind of like this shirt that I got on. You know, like Easter's usually pretty pastel colored, right? So I was like, all right, we're going to do pastel color. And uh, I had this big piece of lemon quartz, and it took a lot of working with. Speaking of working with it, uh, I was over on panel talking to a bunch of folks, and uh, one of them was drunken one. And we were talking, and, and I was polishing it. And it was pretty cool to get to hang out with some people I haven't talked to in a while. Oh, and Miscellaneous Beer Reviews was there, too. All right, cheers, buddy. Good to see you. Hope you're doing all right. Talking about artwork, Miscellaneous Beer Reviews makes uh, gemstones out of dessert food. You should see some of the pictures of the food that he makes. It's all, like, beautiful and stuff. And Fall Dog made it, eaten au gratin. Oh man, you should see the the au gratin that Miscellaneous makes. I bet it's got, you know, like flowers and stuff on it. It's really cool stuff. Hey, 710, glad you're here, buddy. Hope you like the lemon citrine. Hope you're having a good Easter. Hope you're ready to make it a great week. This is going to be kind of a boring show, but uh, I got some jokes later. I got some Easter jokes, you know. It's not going to be as lit as Coachella, but we're getting there a little bit at a time, you know. Cheers. This piece of lemon citrine was kind of hard to work with. It, it ground down fairly easily. This is a 60 grit lap, but it's a fairly, it's, it's a heavily worn 60 grit lap. It cuts like a fresh 100 grit. See, I'm trying to get that cracky chip out of the back you can see some of the chips coming off the edge it was something else grinding rocks working with it got a bump and grind hey Kayla fan number one welcome to the show how's it going what's your favorite gemstone let us know 
Good to see you. Cheers, 710. Cheers to Kayla. Awesome. We got some cool people here. That's cool stuff. I'm glad you could make it to the show. I wish I had a little bit more in my mouth. That just sounds weird. I actually did all my speaking earlier after I polished up the, the lemon citrine here, which we should get to the microscope cam so I can show you. I went and did an open mic. An Easter open mic. That was kind of interesting. I was actually pretty late to the show, which sucked because I wanted to catch, you know, the other comedian's sets and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I was still able to make it, and they still let me up on stage. I did a few jokes, and I got some laughs, and I got some encouragement. I always like that. I'm pretty happy with my Easter jokes that I got for you all. This is a pretty big piece of lemon citrine, isn't it? It's got a lot of nice yellow in it. It's got like this triangle thing going on in there. And in order to get that straight, I was having trouble with it. Pretty happy with it, though. It worked out. Just trying to keep it big, you know, because it's big to start with. I don't want to grind it all, all the way. Opal and Ruby are my favorite stones. Ooh. Ruby's a classic. I love me some Ruby. Opal is a gemstone. Yes, it is. It's not a crystal. But it is a gemstone. And um, just to be clear, like a crystal grows and it has a repeating structure. Opal is actually more of a type of natural glass. Because it's kind of like quartzy water that fills a void. And then there's little diatomes that live inside there while it hardens. And then they move around and they create the shiller, the different colors and stuff like that. So when you take a crystal or a non-crystal potential gem and you shape it, it becomes a gemstone. Or if you just have a crystal and you mount it, it's a technically a gem that becomes jewelry. So you, you, once you put the gem, the gem or the crystal in the jewelry, then it becomes a, a jewelry mounted gem, gemstone. And that's what we have here. Let's get to the microscope portion, right? So we can show you some stuff under the mic. Riscope. Ruby is my birthstone. Mine is ruby, but I love all rocks. Yeah, Collette loves rubies. Oh, that reminds me, I'm supposed to fire up the uh, chatbot. Let's get that done. Firing it up, making it happen. Right, Collette, some, I have no idea what the names are. My favorite stone is Hidden Knight. Oh, how to garden. Hidden Knight's a good stone. I actually got to work with some of that. Freaking green spodamine. It was, uh, it was a little difficult to work with, actually. And that reminds me, while I got you here, how to garden, how do you work with spodamine? Like, what, what do you start with to rough shape it? Because wh when I was shaping it, it was like there was cracks, and every time I'd try to grind them out, I was just chasing them. They got worse and worse and worse. So I, I kept wondering before I work with any more hidden night, or any spodamine for that matter. How am I going to work with it without chasing the cracks down? How am I going to find the friggin' microscope software? Let's see. Opal and rubies are my favorite, too. You know, opal is a beautiful stone, and rubies, I love rubies. I mean, rubies are one of the basic five. You got diamonds, and then rubies, then sapphires, then emeralds, and then amethyst. And after that, it's topaz. Or, if you're going for value, it's topaz, then amethyst. Dang, this thing's so big, we can't even fit it all under the microscope cam. So anyway, I got this triangle on the front here, or on the, well, it's on the back, but it's on the front end of the stone, 
it's on the end that's pointing toward me and it kind of reflects back there's no triangle back there like that that is not a triangle that's just a reflection of it on that surface I kind of like how it reflects off that surface but then there's a triangle happening in the back end there it's kind of a not really a triangle but it's like a like a five-sided kite thing this this triangliness and in order to get this side and this side to match it was really frustrating I wound up I, I kinda had an Easter blessing in that I had an unused 240 grit I had a fresh 240 grit and I was able to to cut it real easily because sometimes I gotta push on the stone and it, it turns on me but that with that fresh one as soon as I just touch it a little bit it just it just cuts it away it's it, it works so well and look at how yellow this stuff is it's so yellow I really enjoyed working with this stone it was a good stone to work with I almost wanted to say seven tenths, but that's the 29th. <laughs> oh, okay, cool, seven ten, that's awesome. Eighth, wait a minute. What am I doing? No way, seven ten. What day? Don't say the 11th. The seven tenth. Amethyst is pretty. I love amethyst. Actually, Kayla, I have a piece of amethyst that was so close to being done. So close. So close. And I dropped it. And it got caught in the thing and went... Pshh. And I don't know where it is because it could be over there. But then I got this light over the thing so it could have hit the light and went over that way. So it could be anywhere. And I haven't been able to find it yet. I'll find it eventually, and we'll make it a feature. And I actually have a piece of amethyst I was thinking about looking at under the microscope cam, which we'll go ahead and do that now, which I need to grind a little bit of, you know, this rusty stuff out of. But this piece of amethyst is a nice, deep, bluish amethyst. Are we done with that video? We got a few different videos almost in the next video I'll have the pencil marks so that you can see the cracks that were in it then I had to grind out of it yeah I know sometimes I I mean I drop them a lot but usually I can find them it's just friggin that amethyst and it was so beautiful it's got a stripe in it yeah that's a thing I'm not even on the microscope cam scene curse me I'm sitting here showing this friggin thing and I'm like okay look at this triangle Here's the triangle. He's talking about the triangle. Sorry about that. Total cheese ball. <laughs> Total my fault ball. Okay, microscope cam isn't showing on screen. Thank you, Colette. You're awesome. I almost wanted to say seven tenths, but it's the 29th. Okay, that would be interesting. Talk about birthdays or something, anniversaries something like that okay thank you very much call it awesomeness like to see it when you find it okay i will be glad to show it i will be i will be glad to feature it because it was it's so beautiful i need to learn how to leave well enough alone that's what i need to do i never need to learn how to leave well enough alone yeah i had to put some sticky stuff under the grinder because i'm pushing on it so hard just trying to get the cracks out that's the first thing you got to do is you even down the surfaces and then you got to get the cracky parts out so that's step two step three is deciding on what shape you're going to make it which i decided to go with this bigger triangle thing and step four is getting it close to that shape and making sure you got the problems out step five would be to even it out because by then it's usually uneven and step six is to smooth it all over and step seven is to not screw it up and step eight is don't drop the stone freaking dropping the stone but anyway this is a triangle that i cut in the bottom and the other the other triangle there is a, just a reflection it's a it's just a reflection on that surface there's no actual triangle in there so if i flip it over and see there's the triangle that's been reflecting 
and this side is the side that has the big five-sided triangle kite shape and then the two this one here and this one here are the ones that I, I was having trouble getting even and you'll see them on the video when we get to them like the, the fourth video out I wound up using a fresh 240 grit and shaping them because I was like like you see me pushing on it and trying to get them even and they get uneven they get like long or they get turned or they turn into two surfaces like like it'll be like I'm pushing on it and then this side is softer so it, it just it turns into it and it, it makes it you know real easy okay there you go you can see that big crack on the face even though I got all the little rough edges ground off you can still see the crackliness okay we got two more videos three more videos really but I think it's pretty much just two more videos okay there we go yeah see there's the crack in the face I used a pencil to help highlight them then we got this crack over here by my thumb you can see how deep that is but we're getting rid of most of that anyways and then this crack over here we're also going to get rid of the bulk of that gotta get rid of those little divots in there and stuff yep see that cracks kinda deep but we're gonna get rid of most of that just trying to grind the bottom out so that it gives us the reflection that we need but that's kinda how it turned out I was just like oh okay we're just gonna make a big surface on the back and a big surface is easier to polish on the the sandpaper and plus it really kind of it turned out I'm, I'm happy with it I'm happy with this gem when it comes down to it I ask myself if I had the rough crystal beforehand and I had the gem that I finished making would I want to trade it because it's not always yes I mean sometimes I don't make the best gem but most of the time I'm, I'm happy with it I'm like yeah I would tr I would trade I would trade the rough crystal I started with for that gem even a square trade no cam on screen okay that was a few minutes ago so maybe we got one now I actually kept ice in my mud tray oh, okay that's interesting to keep to to shape the hidden night okay gotcha that's interesting I'm gonna have to remember that because I I wonder if it was just getting hot on me how to garden because I was kind of grinding it in a hurry I was like oh this will be neat and I'm gonna grind it up for the show and then it didn't really work out here's this amethyst I was talking about you can kind of see the nice color in it and you can also see the difference in the color between the clear clearer side and the purplier side and that's part of the trick with amethyst is it usually has stripes in it and if you turn it just right you can look down the purple and then you get it to flare out and that's how it works in your favor is to have that stripe usually when you got the gem you want the stripe to be down one side because then it'll the light will bounce off and back and forth and it'll it'll kind of spread out that way that's usually how it works out. This is a nice flat surface. It's got a lot of this rust in it though. We're gonna grind that out. I wanna say I got like three of these pieces in one lot. It wasn't cheap, but it wasn't too expensive either. And considering how beautiful it is, I'm 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 pretty happy with it. I mean it's nowhere near as big as that lemon, but it's it's a nice piece of amethyst so we'll see once I get it shaped up we'll see how it turns out I did want to look at some peridot under the microscope I got two pieces of peridot I'm gonna show hey nailed it outdoors how's it going good to see you man how's the fish biting it's been so cold around here it's probably too cold to go go fishing do you ever go ice fishing I remember going ice fishing and we actually hit a hot spot wound up just I mean you could just pull pull fish after fish 
after fish. It kind of looked like that scene in The Simpsons with the frying Dutchman where the guy's pulling the fish and throwing it and then they, and then they land in the guy's mouth. Is rust typical? Yes, caramel pop. The rusty parts on the stone are typical, and I don't have it here, but I have some, I have some rose quartz that has rust on it. Uh, the orange citrine is actually the result of rust. A lot of the lemon in the lemon citrine is the result of rust. Amethyst is actually the result of UV radiation, not nuclear radiation. It's not ionizing nuclear radiation that, you know, makes you into a mutant. It's more of like a UV light radiation. Okay, yeah, we need to straighten out the top of this guy. It's got potential. It's a really little piece. Tiny little piece of peridot. It's also got a flaw in the back of it there. Good to see you, Caramel Pop. How's it going? How's Koga doing? Hope everything's going well. Hope Las Vegas is well. Hey, if you guys are in Vegas, you should say hi to Mr. Sparks a lot. I actually did an open mic comedy night uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was wearing my Mr. Sparks a lot shirt. That was awesome. I really like that shirt. It got more compliments. There it is. There's that problem. See, I wanted to grind that out, but if I grind it out, I'm going to be missing a lot of the stone. And when I flip it over, it doesn't really seem to cause a problem. So I could pretty much just leave that there. It does cause a little bit of a refractive problem. That's why that line is in there. Otherwise, it'd just be a flat surface. But it still looks like a beautiful piece, right? Speaking of beautiful pieces... Oh, you're a Leo, so you're a Peridot. This is a, this is, um, you know, I'll show you on the regular size cam. There's a piece we were just looking at. This has good color too, doesn't it? Because sometimes Peridot's like a yellowy color. And this has a nice green color to it compared to like the yellow in this, in this lemon citrine. This, this piece, I want to even it out. I keep thinking that maybe I should put it on the dop so I can use the faceter because it's valuable at this size but at the same time it's got flaws in it. See this crack over here on the side? It's got that flaw. But here's where I'm worried about it. See when I roll it over to the side that's a pretty even straight line right there, yeah? Look down here at the bottom this bottom area, that's not very even that's not very straight compared to the top. Let me flip it over and show you what I'm talking about. See, that's not even. This surface right here. And it is square. I mean, this is square on top. That's pretty square square. But the problem is this big surface, this large flat surface area here is like this and it needs to be straightened out and it's so big that in order to straighten it out I'm worried that I'm gonna lose too much of the stone I don't know we'll see otherwise I'd have featured this one because it's been a little while since I've had some peridot on the show but it is gonna be a feature soon enough it's nice nice big piece good color beautiful tone gonna finish it out. I think I'm gonna put it on the dop though first. I don't know, it's so tiny, but it's so hard to get a big piece of peridot with that good color, you know? Be right back, but I'm listening. Oh, you're fine, Kayla. Thanks for coming by. I hope you're ready to make this a great week. You have the ability to make it a great week. That's that's part of that's part of what we do here is encourage you, to, you know, because we, we have the ability to do stuff. That's what this is about. It's about being able to do stuff. And it's about being able to buy stuff. Like crispy fries. Have you ever bought fries? I mean, I like potatoes. I like them all different kinds of ways. I like all kinds of different fries. I do have my favorite fries, and it changes depending on my mood. Sometimes I feel like waffle fries. Sometimes I feel like curly fries. Sometimes I feel like eating fries. That's usually why I buy them. 
This time I bought what are called extra crispy fast food fries. I get it. They're talking about McDonald's fries, right? But they can't actually say that. And I'm, when I'm used to when I'm talking about fries, I'm used to like the crinkle cut fries. You know, they're a little thicker and they're kind of like fluffy inside and you know, you put them in the oven and they're okay, but they're not they're not like fast food fries. These are. These actually, they have the fast food grease on them. It's like they douse them in some of that fast food grease. And they actually crispy up pretty nice. I was pretty happy with the purchase. And mostly I saw, okay, Orida. I know that name. It's not too expensive. It was a good deal. I wanted to get some, I was actually going to get some crispy crowns, which are basically, they're tater tots, but instead of being a barrel shape, they're like a flat. They're, they're more like a checker. And uh, they the reason I get the crispy crowns is because they fry up nice. They're crispy. They're crowns. You know, gemstones. That's always cool. Like making my own fries. Oh, Austin. Cheers, buddy. Good to see you, man. How's it going? How you been? I haven't seen you in a while. I like the Peridot color better than Emerald. You know, I will say that getting into gemstones i always just think of emerald as green but emerald does have its own color and there are different colors of emerald emerald ha the good colombian emerald has a nice neon green but the peridot is actually i'm gonna have to agree with you on that peridot emerald is more pleasing to the eye i, I mean it, it looks more tasty it looks more like an apple jelly rancher the uh, emerald looks more like a piece of nuclear fallout. Something. <laughs> but I'm going to have to say, yeah, I like that. Crinkle cut fries. Crinkle, crinkle cut fries are good. I do like them. It's just that when I put them in the oven, they don't turn out the same as like a, like a crispy crown. Which I really like the crunchiness. And so that's why I kind of go for them. Um, and that's basically why I buy that. Have you ever bought extra crispy fast food fries? Crispy fries. Then which ones did you buy and why did you buy them? These were the only ones available. Of, out of all the fries, those were the only extra crispy fast food fries available. That's the kind we got. Put them in the air fryer. Okay, so that's an interesting thing. I've never put crinkle cut fries in the air fryer i'm gonna have to try and do that see i mean i like steak fries which are the big wedgie or cut fries you know but they're like I, I like more of a crispy fry than a soft fry maybe it's just personal preference which is kind of weird because i love waffle fries and they usually have a fluffiness to them but they'd also they also have a lot of crispy crunch to them and I don't really like hard fries. I don't want them to be like <laughs> too crunchy, you know. I, li I like them to be crispy. <laughs> I like fries. I like uh, they're a great way to get ketchup into my mouth. That's one of the things is like putting, trying to get all the fr fries lined up equally, so that I can make this like fry-shaped spoon. It's it's kind of like I'm building a raft to help hold the ketchup as I get it on into my mouth. I like the light milking green of a Carolina Emerald. Oh, there you go. Yeah, see that how to garden knows there are different colors of emeralds. And like a lot of the emerald that I've that I've gotten, I should actually I'm going to take a note so we can show some emerald under the microscope. Cuz I have just a little bit of emerald but the color in it is either going to get ground out when I grind on it or it's like so opaque that it's like this dark green and it's nice it's but it looks like appetite and so I'm like well what shape am I going to go with because it's opaque and I always tend to, to gravitate toward the, the translucent crystals that I can put facets in and I, I gotta say, just, you know, since we're talking about emeralds, the very first gem I worked with was emerald. It was opaque emerald. 
And uh, that's what I should show next week on the show is the very first emeralds that I worked with. Hey, Stony Crow made it to the show. Cheers. Glad you could make it, Stony Crow. Saw Stony Crow last night over on Enlightened's channel, over on Desmond's channel. We were talking about gems, and I think I actually showed this uh, piece of lemon citrine. And uh, I finally got it shaped up, Stony Crow. I worked on it hard all day and, and had myself a nice, relaxing Easter. And uh, got this, this thing to work. I'm pretty happy with it. It wound up turning into a nice little, little piece of lemon citrine. A lot of work went into it. Man. I can't believe how much video there is. I think I'm going to skip some of this video just so you can see kind of the final video. Gotta go. Take care. Have a good night. Have a good night, Carmel Pop. Thanks for coming by and popping in and, and popping off in the chats and other pop-related jokes. And uh, hope you enjoy drinking some soda pop and have, have yourself a good week. Make it a good week and, and say hi to everybody for me, will you? Glad I could make it to the show. Not bad now. Was in the hospital. What? Hypoxia of the lung? Thanks to vaping. Wow, man. That's crazy. I've never heard of hypoxia. Um, is that like having chicken poxia of the lungs? I've never heard of that either. I I'm glad to hear you're doing okay, man. You gotta keep me updated on this stuff. I know Austin in real life. He's OG. That's too bad about that vaping, though, man. You gotta watch that. I've heard good things about vaping. I I've heard a couple of bad things, but it's not like smoking where you hear constant bad things. But I have heard some good things. But I've also heard bad things. More common term is popcorn lung. E. Okay, so pox. Yeah, poxy. Popcorn lung. Eesh. Youch, dude. Hope you're doing all right now, though. I mean, well, yeah, you said you're you're not in the hospital anymore, but I hope they got you fixed up. I keep. I was thinking earlier when I was cutting this gem and all the like the water vapors up in the air and I'm like wait a minute does this doesn't this water vapor have a little bit of crystal in it am I breathing crystal chunks is this healthy for me maybe I should be you know using a face shield or something to kind of keep some of that down I want to be careful you know um let's see jokes we got jokes for the show it is time for the joke portion of the program what do I got this I, I hey happy easter Big love to all you folks out there. Hope you're having a good Easter. Let's see what I got for jokes. Because I did... Um, I did all my... Uh, my open mic set last week. But I got new jokes this week. That's what we got. Fresh jokes, baby. Just for you. Because I love you so much. Let's see. Gonna get rid of a couple of other jokes before I get to the Easter jokes. Um... So actually, I was on panel with uh, Drunken One and, and Miscellaneous and some other cool people. We had Kyle on there, we had John and Ellie on there, and we had Mary and Butch, and, and it was really cool to see everybody. And Leprechaun was on there, and he, we were all talking, and Leprechaun was pointing out, and I told him I'd give him a shout-out for this joke. I, it's kind of an unfinished joke. Excuse me, but it has to do with... Uh, you know, how ridiculous bars are getting with their Bloody Marys. It's like, we saw this Bloody Mary, and it had, it had you know, an olive in it. It had the celery stalk. It had a piece of bacon. It had a beef rib. It had a piece of shrimp. And it had this, like, uh, crab claw sticking out of it. And we were like, yeah, I know what you mean. These Bloody Marys are getting ridiculous. Last bar I was at, I ordered a Bloody Mary, and they brought me out a charcuterie board with a shot of vodka poured over the top of it. That was, that was the joke. We need to kind of build it out a little bit, but I think there's some humor there. Let's see, one more, and then we got the Easter jokes. Um, I've been working hard to get my six-pack. 
I've been working so hard trying to get my six pack going, you know, and it's like I'm actually having to put forth work to avoid showing me people my six pack. It's like I'm so proud of it. I want to just like, like, like bring it up. Like, hey, did someone say six pack? And then I lift up my shirt, and then you know, it's it's almost so bad that when I wake up in the morning, I I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll just not wear a shirt today. Never know who who I might see that I I want to show my six pack to. Oh, I built out some more of this joke. Um. Yeah, I never know who I might want to show my six pack to. Doing flexes on the way out to get the morning newspaper, you know. Oh, did I did I drop something over there and flex in my six pack stomach? Which actually I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. Getting close. Doing sit ups. A little non joke side side note. It took me freaking 30 years to realize that I don't sit up with my stomach muscles. I sit up with my back muscles. So in order to do sit-ups, it didn't build my, it didn't build anything but my back. So I had to start training myself to use my stomach muscles so that I can do sit-ups to build the six-pack. But that's not very funny, so we're going to get back to the, the joke part of the program. Uh, I found out why the chicken cr- the reason I found out the reason the chicken crossed the road was to chase down the Easter bunny for hiding all her eggs. Makes makes sense, right? Okay. Moving on. I've been trying to eat healthy, so I thought I'd buy my Easter candy at Whole Foods. But they're selling the same peeps they sell at Walmart. They just put a free range sticker on them. And they're not selling Easter bunnies. They're, they're, they're not selling chocolate Easter bunnies. All they have is chocolate wheatgrass. Which I kind of understand. Because, you know, I... I usually eat the face off the chocolate Easter bunny first. So he's not looking at me while I eat the rest of him. And, uh... That was one of the things about growing up. Is I'd see, I'd see the chocolate Easter bunny and I'm like, Oh, wow, look at all this chocolate. And then I bite into it and it's hollow inside. That was my childhood introduction to big business and capitalism. But it's it's getting so bad. I mean, they, they didn't have any chocolate Easter bunnies, just chocolate wheatgrass. Instead of hiding eggs, we have to hide colored bean pods. And, um... Unfortunately, yeah, that's I should have saved the chicken joke for the end of the joke portion. Because that's all I got for the joke portion. Where is the intro? There it is. For the <laughs> joke portion of the program. You guys are fantastic. Thanks for putting up with my jokes again. I do actually have a little bit more of this video to roll. I mean, the bulk of it. Yeah, you can see me there kind of struggling with uh, trying to get it polished out on the backside there. Most of what I skipped over in terms of the video is me just going back and forth with trying to polish the last little bit. And then I finished it out with some cerium oxide. So I did actually skip over a few minutes of video. But uh, I'm going to let it play while I, while I talk a little bit and, and thank you all for coming by. If you got anything coming on your channel, let us know. Drop it in the chats. I want to see... I want to see what you got coming up. I want you to tell me what's happening on your show. Jokes, jokes, jokes. Pounds fist on the dinner table. <laughs> oh, dude, Austin, I got to tell I got to come over and talk about my open mic night adventures. I talked about it last week on the show, but I got to tell you in person I've been doing some open mic nights and I got I got some sets and some bits and stuff. Had me on steroids for a couple weeks. Okay, so your six pack is rolling. That's scary. I tried to vape to quit smoking, but instantly made my throat scratchy and gave me lung issues. I threw my vape away after three months. Ooh, Stony, I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry to hear that. I hope you're I hope your uh your your throat is doing better. I I mean that's what I hear is that some you know, some people they do the vapes, but then some of the vapes turn out bad and it's like you're you know you got giant clouds of vape going on and and sometimes there you know you get companies that don't do the vape part very well oh here i am there's the thousand grit i'm switching back to the sharp 240 so you're going to see the sharp 240 grit disc cut 
to try and get that triangle in the back because I had I once once I got the the side ones they weren't even and then I got the center thing polished down there was like some edges on it and I had to polish that center part deeper and it turned into like this hexagon and the hexagon didn't match the triangle of the overall shape of the piece so I went back to giving it that sharp 240 to try and get that that center triangle thing back because it, it just it works better with the shape of it it looks a little more natural I'm free every day after 5 p.m. oh great Austin for no charge he's free I like things that are free actually had something about free things on the online joke gym that's another thing I've been doing on the other channel the YouTube administrator channel is the online joke gym it's been two weeks since I've done it but this week I think I'm gonna be able to get back into it I've just been too busy I'm back in to chat now hey hey how to garden and Austin cheers hi Kayla glad you are all here good to see you I'm glad you guys are doing all right it sure turned out big and yellow that it did that it did why the chicken lay an egg why did the chicken lay an egg hey Zeb Zeppelin made it oh man I totally missed Zeb how's it going Zeb good to see you welcome to the show thanks for coming by happy Easter a little bit of mod status for you for for showing up on Easter and we'll get Stony Crow in there too because I know Stony. The most interesting emerald I ever mounted was a really dark, almost black, tri-cut. Woo, an 8-carat emerald? Emeralds are like four, or $500 a carat, man. So, like, we're, we're talking about like a $3,000 stone. Just for the stone, in a men's ring I made of Black Hills red gold. Now, that's confusing. That is confusing, I gotta say. It's red, red, it's black, it's black and red. It's, wait, which, <laughs> no, I gotcha. If red gold, it, now, I don't know a lot about gold or the metal. Red gold, is it like, why is it red? It was flanked with two white sapphires. Oh, man, that's the thing about sapphires, is sapphires come in every color, and if a sapphire is red, they call it a ruby. Because it's the same stuff. It's corundum. It's kind of like how lemon citrine is a type of quartz. So lemon citrine is actually yellow quartz. Amethyst is purple quartz. Um, veramine is green quartz. But then don't be confused. Green quartz is different from greened amethyst or green amethyst, which is baked amethyst. They take poorly colored amethyst and bake it to turn it green. I got a piece of that, but it... It's almost gray. I mean, it's 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 green technically, but it's almost gray, and it's treated. So I haven't worked with it. I don't really work with treated stones, you know. Just working with this beautiful lemon citrine's got me. Uh, it's got me spoiled. That's what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, we went back to the thousand grit. We we cut it. We cut it down. I think I'm actually going back to the two forty gonna cut it again it was it was because I had like this 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 angle on this back side and I had to push the the I had to push that facet down to get rid of it and I didn't want to turn the facet too much otherwise it would turn into a window and you just see a giant like open spot in the middle instead of seeing all the yellow that flares out and got you know the shapes you just you just see a, a like an open sp there you go if I turn it like that you can't really see an open spot because of the reflection through the top but you can see how the yellow goes away it's yellow it's not yellow and so if I had had turned that flat spot too much to try and get rid of those we would just have a non yellow spot but the fact that I was able to turn it up and in to get rid of it we were able to keep the yellow and then I put those wings back on it to kind of make it a complementary triangle to the other triangle that's in there so that's kind of how that worked out mostly I was just trying to keep the stone big I want to you know it's 
big to start with. Big old friggin' bonk right in the way. And make an eyeglass out of it or something like that. It's like, whoa, baby. Pretty happy with it. It's one of the biggest gems I've shaped so far. So, big old fisty gem. Anyways, we're getting about at, to the end of the show. I'm running out of things to say. You guys are just so awesome. Filling you up with as much awesomeness for the week as I can. We had so many great people come by. Man, I am fired up. We had some awesome people come by here. We had Martial Artist 2012 made it. And Colette S., Queen of the Rubies, made it. Miscellaneous stopped in to say cheers. That was awesome. It's good to see Miscellaneous again. Got to hang out with him and Drunken One. Drunken One is so OG. He's been around forever. He was around for the early days of the Hangouts, you know, back when. And 710 made it. Man, it was awesome seeing 710. And Kayla Fan, number one. I'm so glad that 710 and Kayla Fan are friends because it's like small world, you know. And next thing we got, Caramel Pop popped in. It's good to see Caramel Pop. I'm glad. And How to Garden made it. Hey, How to Garden. I'm always glad to see How to Garden. I hope I hope your garden's going to grow great this year, How to Garden. And I hope you catch some good fish. Speaking of fish, we had... Uh, let's see, where's he at? Where's he at? Nailed It Outdoors stopped by. That was awesome. I'm always glad to see Nailed It Outdoors. Nailed it outdoor. I watched some of Nailed it Outdoors videos. He's a cool guy. He's good people. And that's what I like is good people. We like a good environment. This, I mean, because, you know, I'll, I make my jokes. I do my hangouts and stuff. But mostly this Sunday show is a chance to just kind of chill and, and, and be cool and, and, and recharge our awesomeness. Because that's what it is. It's pure awesomeness. Just like all of you. I'm talking, hey, hmm, hmm, you, yep, you, all of you, right there, and even you watching later, you too, you get to be part of it, and Austin McCool made it, I haven't seen Austin in a while, any day after five, that's another thing I gotta do, is I gotta go talk to Austin about the open mic nights, and Stony Crow made it, I'm so glad Stony was able to pop in and say hi, Cheers and big love to all you awesome people for hanging out and Zeb Zeppelin too. It's good to see Zeb. I haven't seen Zeb in a while and Zeb Zeppelin. I, I love me some Led Zeppelin. That's I mean I haven't bought a lot of CDs in my day, but one of the CDs I did actually go out and buy was a Led Zeppelin CD. Maybe he's not talking about Led Zeppelins. Maybe he's talking about flying a Zeppelin, which is one of my jokes. I I prefer to travel by blimp because it makes me look thinner talking about trying to work on my health and all that stuff uh, red gold holds a lot of copper and some silver to harden the metal several shades come naturally from the black hills oh, okay it's got that copper in there to help with that so you get the redness and that's an that's another thing i found out is that pure gold like 24 karat gold plated is one thing but 24 karat gold is bad because it's so soft it doesn't last it doesn't hold its shape just through natural wear, it stretches out and and deforms and it loses its luster. So that's why we want to have like an 18 carat to help harden it up. And uh, cheers, mugs of beers, and other great delicious things that we like to drink. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up because I've been going on for way too long, and uh, I hate to put you guys through too much of me talking. But I, I'm I'm so glad you were able to come by and say hi, and hopefully I can see y'all next week, and every week, on the Sunday evening time slot. Big love. Have a good one. <laughs>